Okay, uh, hey guys, welcome back to the tutorial. Today we're going to be uh, comparing uh, creasing with uh, supporting loops uh, and see uh, when you use uh, which one uh, and which one is better. So uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's, uh, let's take this uh, cylinder for example. I'm going to go to edit mode. First of all, I'm going to duplicate this for this to the side right here. Head over to uh, the edit mode, uh, select uh, these uh, edges right here. I'm going to crease them up. There you go. And I'm going to add a uh, subdivision surface. I'm going to do a shade smooth. So that's what I've got right here. Then first of all, get rid of the uh, end gun right here. I'm going to do an inset. Uh, and then uh, delete the space right here, get rid of the uh, crease right here. I'm going to do a grid fill, I think that's it. So that's with the, uh, the result with the uh, creasing right here. Uh, I'm just going to delete this one right here for now. We don't need it. So this is the result with uh, creasing right here. This one, I'm going to get rid of this as well. I'm going uh, to do the same thing. With this right here, I'm gonna delete it. And I'm gonna do a grid fill. This time, I'm gonna select this right here. I'm gonna do a chamfer. Add a couple of iterations. That's why I got it right here. Uh, the other, let me uh, do, let me duplicate this. Or do anything to it. I'm going to do a chamfer on this one. Do a shade smooth. And for this one, I'm going to add a couple of edge uh, loops and do a, uh, a subdivision surface on it. So, yeah, this is what we got right here. This with the creasing, we can also increase the creasing. We can uh, so I got full max creasing right there. This is what I got. This is uh, with the supporting loops and this is with the chamfer. So okay, let's talk about all of these. So with the creasing, you get the least amount of uh, uh, geometry and it's optimized, but this is the result that you get. And the problem with the creasing is that if you don't have enough supporting edges, it gives uh, bad results like uh, I showed you before but if you add a, a bit of ge geometry it does help uh, with overall look so you might say well what's the difference uh, with this uh, and this right here we got the same amount of geometry and the creasing doesn't do much of uh, much of uh, doesn't contribute contribute much of a difference into the model right here uh, so, you're right, but uh, that's this is not the best example to show where the creasing might be useful. I'm gonna show you that in a second. But the problem with creasing is you always need a bit of a supporting edges in order to get good results. But that, that's not the case with supporting edges uh, because that's uh, quite a nice workflow and it's procedural. But the problem is you don't you're not able to uh, add uh, supporting loops everywhere and. Uh, it does uh, add a lot of geometry, but for creasing, if you already have some geometry tying up the border, uh, you can just uh, use the creasing in order to uh, sharpen it even further and uh, really enhance the look of it. But uh, solely uh, or only relying on creasing is a very bad idea if you want to get good results. Uh, as far as chamfer is concerned, uh, this is a very bad workflow in my opinion. Uh, I, I don't personally use the chamfers that much unless I'm trying to establish a curvature uh, before I add uh, any sort of uh, geometry into that curvature. I personally use uh, this uh, method right here a lot. So let me show you an example of where these might be useful. Each, uh, each one of these might be useful. So I've uh, been working on this. Uh, practicing this weapon right here. So, for example, I have used a chamfer right here to establish this curvature, and uh, if I haven't done that, I wouldn't have uh, got the desired results uh, like I got right here. So this is a case where chamfer might be useful, but uh, 
other than that, I got a supporting edges to uh, get the uh, desired smoothness uh, right here. And uh, of course, I got creasing right here. And uh, if you might have noticed, I actually got uh, some edges uh, running uh, along this geometry right here, which uh, contributes to the sharpness of the model, but uh, it wasn't sharp enough. So what I did was I added uh, a bit of a Increasing uh, into this uh, geometry, which uh, sharpened this up uh, even further and uh, gave me this really uh, good uh, result right here. So, this is a case where creasing uh, might be really helpful if you want to save up on a little bit of a geometry and don't want to add additional geometry like this and get uh, sharp uh, and uh, uh, tight corners. Uh, let me show you uh, a case where I use the uh, creasing again. Uh, in this part right here, which is the uh, same deal, I got uh, some supporting loops, uh, but uh, I still got uh, some geometry and uh, loops uh, running along this uh, geometry, which also contributes to tightening of the border, but it wasn't sharp enough. So what I did uh, was I added a bit of uh, creasing to tighten it up even further. Uh, here's the... Uh, I'm going to show you another case where I use creasing. Uh, as you can clearly see, I have uh, a very tight corner right here, and uh, uh, creasing uh, really contributes to that. I actually got geometry right here, which uh, helps creasing do its job a little bit better. And of course, the chamfer is, uh, I, do, I use chamfer to establish the curvature and get the proper uh, angle or whatever uh, before I, uh, doing any sort of subdivision, and uh, that's that's this is a case again where that might be useful. Again, I have some supporting edges running along this in order to uh, tighten this up uh, further, but uh, I'm not gonna get this too close because that might introduce a bit of pinching. So I what I did was uh, I added some creasing into this geometry right here, which uh, does the job uh, really good, and I uh, think it's. Uh, a really desirable result in my opinion. So you can clearly see the same deal right here. I, If I tighten this corner right here and uh, add additional geometry, that might have produced some pinching or uh, unnecessary geometry, but I got away with uh, creasing just fine. Uh, I used some creasing in this example right here as well. Uh, again, I established the curvature with the chamfer before doing anything else. Again, uh, here here again, I use the chamfer for this inside uh, cutout to establish the curvature and uh, not play around with a random distance of uh, of loop edges in order to get the desired uh, smoothness or uh, curvature. So uh, this is a case where you should always be using chamfers, in my opinion, to establish curvature beforehand if you want to be a little bit more precise. Again, I have uh, some supporting edges that helps with uh, creasing, and, but I, uh, creasing really helps to minimize uh, the supporting edges and save uh, a bit of the geometry for you, so you can um, get uh, clean results and, uh, of course, optimize uh, meshes. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. Okay, uh, I think that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you guys learned some new, enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, take care.